Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today, we're going to talk about the clinic that I had this past weekend here, Culpeper, Virginia. We're going to be talking about the different things that I worked on, the things, the lessons that I learned while there, and what you can do if you're ever in a clinic, what you can do to get the best and the most out of a clinic, as well as, let's say, I'm not going to have a clinic near you. These are the three things that help the horses gait the most. So you'll be able to take those exercises and actually go ahead and do them. So let's see here. Um, so a clinic, I'm going to explain how a clinic works really quickly and then tell you, and then I have videos to show you before and after. So a clinic works like this. It's usually three days. Well, it's almost always three days. I never do shorter. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there's nine riders total. And they each ride their horse for one hour each day. And however, I actually do quite a bit of the riding because I find I can help the horses get into gait and do head down a lot faster than if I just give the rider instruction. Hey, Margie uh, and Penny. And uh, Margie is actually one of the horses. She was one of the people in the clinic and one of the horses I'm going to show the progress today. So my goal is at the end of the clinic to have the horse gating, but also then to have the rider get on and get gait. And there's a few things that I learn from every clinic. I learned something, like what I can do better, what I can do just to help people understand it better, and where people are struggling to understand the concepts that I'm teaching. So one of the things that I feel like I explain very well, but seems to not get across, which means I need to do something different, one of them is the concept of head down. Now, most of you have heard me talk about it, but the problem is most of you, even if you've seen some of the videos, don't quite understand how I ask for head down. How I ask for head down is I actually don't ask for head down. I ask the horse to move forward at the walk and then gait or pace and soften their nose, bring their nose toward their chest or break at the pole, vertical flexion, whatever you'd like to call it. You go around in a circle and hold extremely light pressure, like half a pound with both reins, and as soon as the horse softens and tucks their nose, you release. Now, most horses on that release will drop their head for a step or two, and when they do, you stop and praise. Now, that's the easy part at the walk. A lot of people get that at the walk. They come to the clinic, they've done it, but, but what they haven't done are two things. Uh, sometimes people haven't done the softness at all. They trail ride and their horse just knows when they pull on the reins they either need to stop or slow down, but that's not enough. You actually need to teach your horse to soften with the lightest pressure. And you need to do this at the faster speed, at the pace or the gait or the trot. That's what's super, super important, and a lot of people aren't doing that. We had almost all pacey horses at this clinic. Uh, we had seven horses that were more predominantly pacey and only two that were a little bit more trotty and so we did head down and softness with for like seven hours on the first day Friday because so many of the horses hadn't been taught that so if you want to get the most out of the clinic make sure your horse knows softness first and then head down at the walk and the faster speed and when we see that head come down most of the times we see the gate come through now what we also need to see it. what I was finding is that once you get the head down, sometimes that's enough for gated horses. They start gating, but a lot of times you need a little bit more. And this second part is the harder thing for most riders to learn. But if you can do this and have this, your horse prepped to do this before a clinic and your horse is pacey, I promise we will get gate. If you don't have this done before a clinic and your horse is very pacey, I can't guarantee how much gate we'll get. So what I want you to do is learn yourself and for your horse how to do a leg yield. Now, a leg yield is the horse going forward and sideways at the same time, usually bent slightly in the opposite direction. So if you're going forward and your horse is leg yielding to the right, it will be right if you're looking this way, leg yielding to the right, moving forward and sideways to the right, then you would have their nose bent slightly to the left. Now, if you don't know how to do this, you don't have a background in dressage, you've never done this or side pass before, find a local trainer, find a Western or a dressage, and go to them and say, all you want to know, you're not asking to teach you anything else, but you want to teach the horse the leg yield and to teach you how to ask for a good leg yield at the walk and the faster speed. That's it. 
Once you know that, you don't have to keep going there. Uh, but it's super important that you learn that. That's what we were finding was actually a lot of the horses at this clinic had been taught to leg yield. Even if it wasn't a perfect leg yield, they'd done lateral work. And because of that, we had a lot of the horses gating and gating with their owners because the owners knew lateral. I've had some clinics where I go and I say, does anybody know how to do lateral work and or, or leg yields? And everybody goes, what's a leg yield? And then I'm like, oh, shoot, now I'm in trouble because we can get head down but sometimes that isn't quite enough to get gait, and most horses are pacey. This is less important if you have a trotty horse, but it is important nonetheless. Okay, so who are we have watching? We have Margie, who is at the clinic, and Penny, Cindy, Hayes. Gail says hi from Michigan. Barbara says hi from Maryland. Crystal says hi. Linda says hi from Maryland. You know, we flew into Baltimore for this clinic. Margie says, the concept is simple, but understanding the amount of pressure is difficult to understand by watching. That's very true. Margie's right. What I do at a clinic is I go around the room and I offer the reins. So you hold the reins just like you're going to ride your horse. And I offer the reins and then I show how much pressure I'm putting. And every, almost every single person is says, wow, that's so, so light. And you hold that till you, they soften and then you release. And... Yes, it's very. it can be very difficult to learn, but it is worth it if you want gait. Lynn says, hi from Tennessee. Uh, Cindy says, loved your clinic last weekend, learned so much. Today, Scooter, I practice what you taught us. Good. And Cindy um, was at the clinic. She audited the clinic, and then she actually had a, a one and a half hour lesson on Monday morning, and she and her horse did super well. But Cindy had taught her horse to leg yield, which is so excellent. Margie says, leg yields are learned in any good English lesson program, it seems like. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Bayron, how's it going? We got a clinic in Alabama in a little over a month and a half. So Abby says, hi, from West Virginia. And Margie says, so very worth it. Well, thank you. Uh, Shanna says, I'm thrilled that in less than 30 minutes, you already had Lily gating beautifully. Yes, Shanna brought her horse again for a lesson on Monday, just a one lesson. And Shanna had done such a good job getting her horse to soften. She'd done a leg yield already that we got uh, her horse Lily gating very, very quickly. So not everything in a lesson goes perfectly. But I'm going to show you some of the progress with the horses that we did. So this is Chili. I'm going to show you. And he is a Tennessee walker. Most of them were. And he was pretty high-headed. He's uh, She said he has an issues with speed control and being nervous. And so we actually ended up on Friday, or the second day, Saturday, adding in food treats. And because he was very distracted, he didn't want to stop and stand. I started feeding him large amounts of food, and he got focused like that and was very interested in what the rider was asking. Uh, but he did need to be careful because he needed to be learned to be polite. So this is Chili. He's a Tennessee right, walker. Course. <clears throat> so we know he's pacey and a lot of times this is the first uh, day it sometimes the clinics we can we can totally fix the pacey horses and sometimes we can just get them really close but a lot of times for really pacey horses if you can just get it a little bit better it's you know that get them into the stepping pace instead of the pace it's much more comfortable to ride so we're just going to show and let he's him very whoa, pacey that's pretty bouncy so some horses can pace and it's not too bad in his pace. Is Quite high-headed. Very uncomfortable. Although that's not bad right there. Did you guys see that? Oh, that was good. That was gating. Oh my gosh, you're fixed. Good boy. I'm a genius. I know, right? <laughs> We're done. So that's usually what I do to show you how it was at the beginning. But that's the first day what this horse looked like. So this guy was very, very pacey, very anxious, very high-headed and fast. So these are not going to show amazing gait yet, but he's going to start to show correct gait. It's just not going to hold it a long time. Uh, he knew a little bit of lateral, but not a lot. And he was pretty high-headed. So we definitely needed to work on that at the faster speeds. Step over. Almost, he had a step. Good, I'll take that. That's much nicer than before. Good job. There you go. Nicely done. Use your tongue. There you go. Good boy. Yes, good job. Easy. Good boy. Good boy. So 
he started out okay, and then he kind of got a little bit stiff. Like, All right, good job. I'll try again. Leg yield over. Yes, that was it. Good job. So here I'm showing you that I'm about to kind of leg yield him over. We're looking for that front leg to cross over. Now he's kind of pacing there as he leg yields. As he gets better, it won't look quite so pacey. So once he steps over, then I ask him to go forward. The other way you can do it is to ask for, and then right away ask him for forward. So there we've got a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, instead of that, uh, instead of the pace that we saw. Uh, and she just commented that he was pace, uh, that he was gating again today. So that's great. Uh, Albert says hi from Oklahoma. Suzanne says hello from Missouri. Looking forward to the Alabama clinic. Uh, Patrice says chili. So Patrice says chili day to the end today. And Patrice was uh, there with her horse, and we'll see her horse Annie in just a minute. And Kelly's comment was pacing like a Jersey milk cow. Well, I actually didn't know that Jersey's paced, but yeah, lots of animals did. And Patrice says so did Annie. Annie was gating too. That's awesome. And Sandy says, I was taught that a horse should be taught leg yields from the ground if they don't know what you're asking. What if the horse is dead-sided and won't move over? Uh, so Sandy, that's a good question. I don't actually know the answer. I've always taught it from the saddle first, but there's nothing wrong with teaching it from the ground. Most horses, uh, it's usually pretty good for them to do it from the ground. Uh, but a lot of times it... A lot of times I'm getting these horses and I have three hours total to work with them. And so I'd rather just teach it from the saddle. Uh, most horses can figure it out. I start with moving the shoulder over. And I have actually quite a lot of videos on my private training group. Because um, there's a horse, uh, I have other horses I've taught it to already. And there's a horse that I'm just beginning to teach how to move the shoulder over, which will turn into a leg yield. And that's on the private training group. But there's nothing wrong with teaching it from the ground. Robin says hi from Suffolk, UK. Suffolk. Is that how you say it? Suffolk. And Beth Martin says hi, and Beth was in the clinic as well. All right, next horse. This is Annie. Patrice has just commented, so we're going to see Annie. Annie was the one of the few trotty horses that we had. So it's when she trots, we're trying to ask her to lift her head up. She actually, Patrice had done a really good job. She taught her softness. I think she'd only had her for like a little over two years. She taught her softness, head down. This mare is just beautifully trained, but a little bit trotty and didn't hold the gait as long on the straightaway. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how I worked with her being a trotty horse. Trotty. This is day one. That's good. And so there's some good nice girl. steps of gate there. Good job. I think that was day one. So I'm Could not giving her a up. treat just yet. I'm, we do lots of stopping and standing, but I want her to go right into gate rather than have to mess with the trot and the pace. Does that make sense? And then when she does really well, that's when I'll give a treat. Good girl. Nice. Yeah, good girl. There we go. Don't trot. Get out of that trot. No. Yes, good girl. <laughs> nice job. Okay, actually guys, I'm pretty sure I got this mixed up. This is day three. Uh, the day two must be coming up, or the first day must be coming up. This is actually day three, so that longer gating that we're seeing is from day three. Um, I had to put these together quickly this afternoon because I just got home last night. Very good. Yes. She got a little trotty. Yes, that was it. Stay slow. Listen to that. Slow down. Slow down. There. Good girl. Pacing and trotting.
good. Good. Nice. Nice. So that was, okay, so I didn't show you the first day, so that was just day three. My bad. But what happened is she was a bit more trotty before. And you see how when I lift my reins, she kind of tosses her head a little? This is because it's the only beginning of the training with the trotty horse. After just a few more days, you won't have to lift your hands up as high. You'll just lift them a tiny bit, and the horse will go right into gait. Uh, and she just did so, so well. Um, okay. Uh, Kelly says, much respect for your devotion to gated horses and improving them. Well, you're welcome, and I hope I make a difference. Robin says, am I using a radio microphone? I am not quite sure what you mean by radio microphone. I am using wireless microphone. Um, you can see it on the side on my belt, and it is attached to the camera, which is why you can get the audio we can get. So, yes, great. Okay, so this next one, Mira, is one of my favorites because their owner, Doris, had taught her a really good leg yield. Now, she was super high and pretty fast when I first got on. Um, she, she would soften, but she wouldn't keep her head down. But we saw a ton of progress with her over the three days and her owner got her so much gait on day three it was just beautiful to see do next so now we, we, we i would tell you to keep doing that at the walk anytime the head oh, comes up or the walk horse. gets fast you're going to ask for that softness but we're going to now add more we're going to speed her up and practice that because we're going to probably practice that both today and tomorrow the speed up and asking her to drop her head because we're looking for her to stretch down this is day one at the faster speed just like she did at the walk all right. <clears throat> Good girl. It's like, what? Go faster? Good. Oh, well, that was anticlimactic. She's like, I'm dropping my head. I'm dropping my head. There we go. Better. There's a head up. That's what we expected. Light pressure. Easy, good, and whoa. So still a little fast, but you saw how quickly she dropped her head. And I'm not gonna ask her to, can you stand? I'm not gonna ask her to hold it. Like I know she can't just hold it while we go in circles. So we train her that when we release the reins, she puts that head down and then we're gonna stop and praise. And that will build it, so we'll be able to do it longer and longer. This is now day three. And she taught, she had taught her to leg yield, and we were working a lot on head down. Definitely is going to need more head down, but she really started to get it. That's pacing. It's no surprise. Pacey. I'm going to ask her for some head down at a little bit faster speed. Now that's not bad right there, right? It was almost a perfect gait. And all I did was ask her to drop her head. That's, that's great. Good job. And so we praised for that, right? And she didn't rush. She wasn't rushing out there. That was good. So good. Very nice. Yes. No, we're not going to go eat the grass. Yes, there it is. Good girl. Very nice. So good. So good. So I haven't done any leg yielding yet. That's just asking for the head down. That's pacey, but see how high her head is? Yeah, it's almost there. You see how it changes? The higher her head is, the pacier she is. Good girl. So even though it's not like perfect, I still want to stop and praise for her dropping her head out here and doing it so quickly. Good job. Easy. Good girl. Nice job. That was good. Very good. So you notice how slow I'm keeping her? The, the other two days That's were in the super arena. important. If we let her go a lot faster, she'll probably just get pacey. Easy, get that head down just a little bit. Yes, that's so lovely. It's perfect. 
Oh man, that last little bit, she was just skating so, so well. And Doris had put a ton of work into her, and I know they're going to be able to keep going and get lots of gait. Uh, Tracy says she really likes the McGregor bit. I recommended. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Okay, uh, a couple more. Uh, three more horses, if you can stand it, to see the progress. Um, now, most of the time, the format looks like this. The first two days, we do indoor uh, training in the indoor arena, work on head down and softness. If the horses are starting to gate, uh, we'll go out on sometimes on day two. And if not, we always go outside on day three to work on the road or hard surface where we can hear it. And the horses often have a little bit more forward energy when we do that. So this mare isn't going to show you a ton of progress in terms of gait. She's very high-headed, very fast. Her movement is so pacey and so much movement. It's very, very uncomfortable to ride. So the owner wanted to know, can we do something to help her smooth out and slow down? She's high-headed. Um, they called her a giraffe. She would often put her head up that high. So what you're going to see is her progress from being super fast and high-headed to how she started to drop her head even outside with all the distractions. Light pressure and release. Like I said, I'd, I'd rather have this kind of behavior after we've trained this softness. I know it's another one. I know. Okay. And this mare is a rescue, uh, and uh, she's a Tennessee walking horse. Girl, I can hear him. So that we have it already trained, and then we practice it when there's distractions. This is, that was the first day. This is now day three, the first time we took her on the road or the driveway here. And release. Taught her right. softness and head down. There's lots of releases, that's the trick. If she's getting really good at softening. She's a huge improvement from from the first day, from Friday. Good, and whoa, we'll praise for that. Good job, here you go. So for her, not only were we, re were we rewarding gait, but also rewarding when she just puts that head down and stays relaxed and slow. Oh, here, Ooh, <coughs> good job. So there her head went up right away. So not even a chance of gating because of how high her head was. And she needs, almost. And she definitely needs some training to back up with her head down. So definitely spend time doing that. Really good. Head down, good head down. It's not gating, but it's head down. And seriously, look at how much lower that mare is keeping her head. She's also not speeding up on a loose rein, and she's starting to hit that gate. Now what I was talking about there is the other exercise we can do is if your horse has a good backup, and once they learn head down, you can have them back up and go forward quickly, which can help get them into gait. Good. Nope. That was close there. It was close. And she's really, this direction, she's good about keeping that head down low. There you go. So that was, she made such a huge progress. Her owner was so happy. She wanted to know what she could start doing and if there was hope for her mare to gate. Uh, uh, Christine says she's adorable. Yes, uh, that mare was really sweet. And Tracy says marriage looks great on me. Well, thank you. I like being married too. All right, two more. This is Daisy, Margie's horse, who I really had a lot of fun with. Uh, she, uh, the big thing with Daisy is she really didn't want to soften. And I actually am going to be posting a video on my private training group of the early training, how he taught her to soften with the really light pressure. Um, but she started doing a lot of gating there on day three. So here's day one. Very pacey. Not high-headed per se, but every time I put light pressure on the bit, she'd put her nose out and her head up. So...
we needed a teacher to soften the bit and one thing somebody commented is she could have an issue with her mouth like teeth or like an infection so it's definitely something we'll be looking into um but right now we did try one or two different bits and it didn't seem to be the bit as much as just teaching her to soften she'd never been taught that a little bit of contact meant to bring her nose in and she's very pacey and not really fast but just extremely pacey day three the stepping pace That's a trot. Trot. So when she trots, I just lift up. Does she normally trot? No? She trots a lot? Okay. Yes. There we go. That's it. That's nice. Beautiful. Good girl. That was really nice there. Good job. So if she trots, you're going to put your hands forward and lift up. Right, that's right. Because you, so yeah. Okay, that's fine. But it's, I don't mind that she trots. I mean, today, like it means she's not pacing. But, we, but if she does it, just, just do it gently, but put your hands back down as soon as she gets out of it. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Mm. Good. Don't trot. Nice. Good girl. And whoa. And whoa. Good girl. Good job! That's good! Oh, that feels so nice! Good girl! What? Yep, it was so nice! That was seriously just lovely gating right there. And she just, Daisy made so much progress. I was so happy. Um, Margie said she just had her teeth floated, which I didn't really think it was a teeth issue. Um, and she just said her teeth were just done, so no worries. Abby asks, are there still spaces for the Ohio Clinic? I believe it's full. You'd have to contact Steph, who's the organizer, to be on the waiting list. So there you go. There are six of the horses that were at the clinic, and it went so well. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the progress we make. Sometimes we see a lot more. We'll get horses that are a little bit closer to gait, not as high-headed. So if you want to come to a clinic or you want to just keep working on your horse to get smooth gait, you want to work so much on softness, which leads to head down on releasing the reins. We actually had some riders that were struggling with releasing the reins. They, they could get softness, but they never completely dropped the reins. And that's something that is super beneficial to remember and to see that and practice it. And then if you really, really want to get gait and you have a pacey horse, go to your basic English or dressage or Western and ask them to teach you and to teach your horse to do a leg yield, preferably with no spurs, because spurs tend to make the horse a little bit tense and you're looking for gait and tense is the absolute last thing you want. So uh, when you, you want to work on a leg yield, you want to know how to do that at the walk and the gait, do that, come to the clinic and we'll put it together or do that. Send me a video and I will help you continue to get a uh, gait. And if you can get that, that head down and softness and you can do a leg yield, gait is just, it's like, it's right there. It's so, so close. And hope to see a lot of you guys at clinics in the future. You got this. Take care.